Facebook Audience Insights is gone as of July 1st, 2021. By the end of this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you an alternative to Audience Insights and how I've used it over the past few years. If you're new to this channel, my name is Armando and I work with small business owners and entrepreneurs helping them generate leads online so they can make more revenue. And if that's something that you're interested in, click the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the other videos. So Facebook has decided to transition to something called Business Insights. And unfortunately, Business Insights will only let you see metrics on your own properties, your own Facebook pages and Instagram accounts, which does you no good when it comes to targeting and layering audiences to find the winners for your campaigns. So what I'm about to show you is a tool that I've been using for a few years, and I'm gonna walk you through how I use it and then how I fill in the gap of the missing pieces of Audience Insights. And I stopped using Audience Insights a few years back, and I moved over to something called Interest Explore. Now I do have a link for Interest Explore in the description. If, if you guys wanna follow along with this video or check out Interest Explore, there is a link down in the description. But I'm gonna show you how I use this tool to help me find winning audiences for my campaigns. The very first thing that you do when you come into Interest Explorer that I do is I type in an overarching, say, um, audience or topic that I wanna go over or that I wanna reach. For example, Tom Ferry, if I wanted to reach all these real estate agents. I would type in Tom Ferry, and then what Interest Explorer does is it brings 15 interests related to Tom Ferry. Now, here's the cool thing about this, is that this tool actually taps into the Facebook marketing API. So you're able to see audiences that are not available to you inside this ads manager detail targeting section. You only get 20 to 25 audiences that everyone can compete against here, but this tool actually taps into the marketing API and you're able to dig deep, deeper and find other audiences. So back to this, once I have this interest, Tom Ferry in here, it's gonna show me a list of other related interests to Tom Ferry. It's also gonna show me the Facebook icon so I can go ahead and search for that if I wanted to. Um, and I can see what Facebook search looks like to see if that page is relevant. Maybe I don't recognize it or whatever. Uh, it'll show me what those pages look like. The other thing that it has is you can search for on Google to see if maybe you can get other ideas and topics. But back to this. So I got Tom Ferry. I know that the tech savvy agent seems relevant. So I would click it and then highlight it in blue. I would then go down this list to find other audiences that I feel might be related to Tom Ferry. So I would do Active Rain Real Estate, the, the Mike Ferry organization. I would do Ben Kinney. I know that's a real estate coach, real estate agent directory. I would look at Realtor Pro. I would definitely pick Tom Ferry. Brian Buffini, Ryan Keller, and all these people. Now, here's the here's the other option that I like from this tool is that what I typically do is I'm clicking on this magnifying glass. And when I click on the magnifying glass, it basically tells this tool to go in and dig deeper on this specific audience. So if I click Gary Keller, for example, or Brian Buffini, I click the magnifying glass, and it's gonna show me additional 13 interests related to Brian Buffini. Now, some of these I've already clicked. You can see them that they're in blue, but there's a few that I haven't clicked before, like the Ontario Real Estate Council. Um, I can also keep going down this if I notice that it's kind of not relevant to me I'll go ahead and I'll click again on another interest like Gary Keller and it'll show me an additional uh, interest of uh, real estate related to now Gary Keller um, all the while it's saving my other interest that I'm able to target in this selection box up here so I just keep repeating the same process over and I look at like in news for example that's a real estate on uh, publication and then I look at something like Keller Williams Realty and I'm gonna click the magnifying glass to see what else comes up. Now it's continuing to dig and it finds 28 interests that are related to Keller Williams. So I have even more stuff in here. Uh, real estate entrepreneur was something that wasn't listed before so I'm gonna click on that. Real estate investment trust. Um, this is actually a real estate firm. A realtor.com Okay, estate agents, real estate appraisal, National Association of Realtors, uh, Cobo Banker, Zillow, Trulia, um, all these are things that are related to real estate that I hadn't seen before. And then I'm gonna repeat the process again with the magnifying glass and it'll bring up even more interest related to these things. Now I can go ahead and 
and keep going down the list. Now, some of them are not going to be relevant, obviously. You know, Grand Theft Auto, uh, the soundtrack is definitely not relevant. And this is why I use the search on Google and on Facebook when I don't recognize something that is related to what I'm searching for. So I'll just keep going down the list and I'll say buyer broker, National Association of Real Estate Brokers, that's that's um, related. And it, you get the idea. I'll keep going down this process. Now, what, what I've done now is essentially I have found audiences and interests that are typically not available to anyone that's searching for them in here. Unless you actually know that you need to click on that and search for that specific thing, it's not going to show up as a suggested audience um, in this section here. Okay. The next step that I do is I, want, I usually save this to a project and I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to say uh, Realtor 2021 and I'm going to save that as a project. Now here's how I use this tool. Uh, the second step on how I use this is I go to my projects and I select the project that I just built. And what it does is it puts all the 20 interests or however many interests that you put in here and adds them to the selection. Now, what I do is I typically go ahead and select at the very least um, 10 to you know 15 audiences, maximum of let's say 50 if I can find them, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna select all of them. And then what I do is I click on this button that says create layers. And it brings up this other light box where it puts all the interest in here. And what I like to do is typically create at least two or three layers um, for my targeting. And I just go and add another layer. And then what I do is I click randomly. And then this tool basically takes a random set of audiences, puts them on top, and then another random set and puts them on the bottom. You can even create an additional layer. You can do these by audience sizes. You can randomize them, whatever. Then what I do is I copy this audiences to the to my clipboard and I go back into ads manager and I'll go ahead and I'll paste those in there and then just like that I'm able to target those okay then what I do is I go back to my tool and I'll find the second layer of audiences I'll copy it and then I will go back and I'll do narrow my search and then I'll go and paste that in here okay and now I'm creating this sort of Venn diagram where people who are interested in Brian Buffini or Gary Keller or National Association of Realtors also must be interested in Inman News and in Real Estate Agent Directory and National Association of Realtors. This makes my target more relevant. So in other words, if people are interested in more than just one thing that's related to that niche, there's a pretty good chance that they are in that niche and it's not just some random interest. Now, here's the kicker, right? Here's the missing piece to Interest Explorer. You don't really have the demographic information that Audience Insights had before, which uh, is gender, which is age, which is kind of, you know, location, that kind of stuff. And I don't really see that as a problem. I don't worry about that because typically what I do is I layer my audiences like this in either one, two, or even possibly three layers. And then I run a video ad campaign. When I run a video ad campaign, either for video views or engagement, I spend about a hundred bucks and then I go back and look at the data and that's going to tell me exactly who's engaging and interacting with my content. Then I can get a pretty good idea of my gender and my uh, age. So basically if I run this uh, and I see that uh, the data comes back and it says that 25 to 45 are the people who are engaging and mainly female, then I have data to go back and say, okay, my audience is for this interest predominantly female and I can go and refine my ads this way making them even more profitable than they originally were so this is the alternative to audience insights uh, again if you guys are interested in this tool there's a link in the description of the of the uh, comments here or in the description of this video uh, and if you have any questions on this if you have any questions on how I layer my audiences or the reason why I do those things leave them in the comments now if this was helpful give us give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one